everybody, yeah. and welcome back to Thunder and Lightning's Gaming News Podcast. We've got, uh, for I think the first time in a long time, a, a kind of a, a meaty uh, episode for you. Yeah, that's exciting. That's exciting. Um, I'll, man, I've got something that I found out about today that's been just taking up my headspace. Okay. And but you got to wait until... Well, I don't know. It could go either way, I think. Okay. I think I might do it on this one, but once it's my turn, as always, Thunder, how was your two weeks in gaming? I have been playing Pokemon <laughs> nonstop. Cool. Arceus still? No. Oh, uh, the, new, the... The newest one. Cool. And I have things to say about them. Yeah, so... Exciting. Remind me, last time we did a gaming podcast, I did talk about RCS, Yeah, right? that was your big one yeah, at okay. the moment. So, um, just briefly, mm -hmm. um, I finished that. Okay. Uh, I got through it pretty quickly. Um, it was a lot of fun. Cool. But I got to the point of the game where I was like, basically the only thing left to do is a couple side quests that are intentionally really, really hard. Mm-hmm. And completing the Pokedex. And I saw... The, I, I caught every Legendary except two. Um, and nice. I saw the road that, like, finishing the Pokedex would have taken me down. And I was like, maybe later I'm jazzed about the newest Pokemon game. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to jump over to that one. Um, so I did. And holy shit. Um, it's so good. Um, I've been watching Pauline play it a lot. It, it seems like it's a lot of fun. I still want to finish... Um, Shining Pearl. Yeah. I'm still in, and I'll, I'll talk about that later, but I've watched Pauline definitely got its glitches. I've seen her struggle in a few spots. Yeah, so let's talk about the glitches first, yeah. okay? So when you say glitches, what, what are you running into? Well, so just based off of when I'm watching her, she definitely can get herself in a corner, can't get out of, or like there's a Pokemon in a tree, she can't throw a ball at it or some shit. I don't know the game that well yet. Mm. I haven't played, but yeah. there's been certain points in the game where she's playing, and it just seems like, oh, this is finicky. Mm. This doesn't seem quite as solid as it could be. No, the game, and I think the key word is solid. The game definitely feels like it's not put together yeah. like a AAA video game should be put together. Yeah. It's it's very like paper clips and tape with yeah. the because I haven't run into like I haven't gotten stuck I haven't actively like cra the game hasn't crashed on me what I have been running into is um like mostly graphical issues oh, like okay. the the match will start and the two pokemon will be small enough that they're too close to the ground and I can see the infinite void of the game below the world. Oh. Um there was one I don't even think this was a glitch it might have just been a feature but I was on one of those towers and you know how in that game pokemon battles just like start wherever you're standing. Yeah, yeah. Um the Pokemon I was fighting was up on the tower, and my Pokemon was all the way down <laughs> at the bottom of the tower. So every time I attacked, it would like the camera would like, like oh my god, like not know where to go. It was it was funny. That's that's funny. But that's the thing: no game breaking bugs. A few things, and I'm like, that's kind of annoying. I I did notice. So in video games, when you have, I'm trying to think of a good example. When you have a game where, uh, let's say Red Dead Redemption, you yeah. have guns in that game, yeah. but you're not always going to have the guns in your hand. Mm -hmm. So when you put the gun away, the game needs to put that gun somewhere. So when the player calls that gun back out, it could just be right there. Typically, the place for that gun would be off camera. Right. <laughs> but I've entered multiple, multiple rooms in, uh, in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet where the scene will be going on. And then in the middle of the floor, I'll just notice a great ball just peeking out like, hey. No, I'm here. I'm here for when you need me. That's so. That's that's I, funny. I saw one and I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." I tried to pick it up. I was like, "Oh, it's not letting me pick it up." And then like four. Yeah, you thought it was an item in the room. I thought it was something. Yeah, yeah and then and then four. I like at, at some sort of interactable. And then four or five times later, I was like, "I'm gonna Google this." And people online were like, "Yeah, it's a glitch. This game is glitchy." And it was like, "Okay, that's fine." However, as long as like. We had a serious issue with our copy of Red Dead One. It, you and me. Yeah. 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 Anybody yeah. who wants to watch that, it's on YouTube, and it's it's a pretty fun watch if for nothing it's else the, to I see how fucked up it gets. I would say it's the Xbox 
a little column A, a little column B, old oh, Xbox. I was just gonna, no, I wasn't even games. comment on that. I was just going to say those videos is probably the highlight of the Quarantine Arc playlist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the the Red Dead episodes, the one where I kill all the cows, I think, <laughs> it's got, like, just way more views than it deserves. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Oops>. But <laughs> it was a genuine accident. Um, but, uh... No, the first three were accidents. You killed, like, 16 cows. It was an accident! <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not even going to talk about it. You can go watch it. You can see how much of it... You know who it wasn't an accident for? Pauline. Anyways. What did Pauline do? Uh, when she c- fucking shot cannons at horses and oh, cows. Oh, yeah. She yeah act, took active steps to damage wildlife. Um, <laughs> To harm wildlife. But the point that I was getting at was those glitches we had in that game broke the game. Game breaking. It made unplayable. it unplayable. Um, if, if there's silly little things like what you're describing right. where it's cute, it doesn't affect my gameplay, but like... So so what? So what right. is my point? If you it's not affecting the gameplay, it doesn't matter. Exactly. You know the you know the the do, the dog the dog bread Pokemon. Oh yeah, the b- Cinnabon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for some reason, whenever I call him specifically, he does a little. Um, oh really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even hear that. Cool. Come on, come on in. No, not if you're gonna do that, Daphne. Come on. There you go. C- uh, Dots Bun, I believe his name is. He does a little like like. He just sort of like bumps up and down. Oh sure, on the ground. like his idle animation. No, it's not his idle oh. animation. It's a glitch. Oh, um, oh, okay. But it's 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 consistent, and it's just that Pokemon. Hi, I know, I know. You're loud and. Oh, is and, she on camera? Uh, That's new. Is she? Yeah. Hey, cool. <laughs> that might be a first appearance. Yeah. Hey, do you want? Okay, so first of all, get off my phone, quick. Chris, cut to a wide. <laughs> oh, <laughs> go oh. to go to podcast while we have the. No, she's no. Daphne, look up here. Look, I'll pet you up here on camera. Daphne, Daphne, my hands are up here. Stop touching my fucking PlayStation 5 controller. <laughs> hey, there she is. Hey. Is there, there a better is. one? Is there a better one? No, no, no. This you is said, fine. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Drizzle. Yeah. It took Daphne to, to have Drizzle <laughs> show up. Hell yeah. I love it. All right, uh, back, back to, to the real shit. Um, <laughs> Mason, just in time, I'm about to talk about how much I love the new Pokemon. Um, but yeah, th- just to wrap that part up, the glitches, not a big deal. They're obviously there. Yeah. Um, still unsure if they're going to get patched out. Any date after well, now, it's too late. Well, they should have been patched out already, but, you know. Once, they, once they're once um, they Pokemon Home compatible, like you said, maybe mm. that's a time where they do all the house cleaning nonsense. Yeah, well, d- do it all at once, yeah. you know? Might as well. Um, but you know, you look at Animal Crossing and you're like, Animal Crossing. Oh, you can be on thing. it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. No, Anyways, I hear um, you. Well, no, I know you can be on it. I just don't know if Nintendo knows good enough to. It's whatever. Anyways, um, this game is fantastic. Um, I I think I I, I do want to talk about the ending, so I, I might spoil okay. if people are okay with that. Um, because there's one really cool thing that happened, and I'm glad Mason is here uh, to hear me talk about it. Um, but yeah, I really like this game. Um, it's I'm glad that I was adamant about playing Legends Arceus first because you were clearly supposed to play them in that order. Oh, cool. Because they announce Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, right? And yeah. they're like, it's open world Pokemon. What does that mean? You'll see. And then they announce Brilliant Diamond, and it's like uh, like unchanged remake, you know? And then they announce Legends Arceus, and they're like, Giddy up, partner. It's a completely different... It's basically a spinoff. And we were like, yeah. okay. Um, and as I said last time, Legends Arceus is basically just uh, Monster Hunter, but with Pokemon. Um, and I think they blended those two game styles really well. This game takes it a step further, where it takes elements from Legends Arceus, it takes elements from traditional Pokemon games, and it takes elements from games like Red Dead Redemption and Spider-Man for PS4. It, t- it takes, it takes inspiration from real open-world games, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think they've melded it together in a really, a really cool and fun way that I really like. So you telling me you can get a Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man, you can get a Spider Pokemon and just like. There is a Spider Pokemon, but you cannot That's web swing oh, in. Right. Uh, you cannot web swing. Yeah, there is a new Spider Pokemon. He's ugly. I well, don't like him. At um, least a B minus. Um, for this game. Yeah, so a few things. 
Number one, something very important to me. I've been talking about this forever. I feel like I've definitely talked about it on the podcast before. I've always wanted a pepper Pokemon. My idea. Like salt and pepper? No, like a like a pepper. Oh, oh like a pepper. Okay, like a, gotcha. Yeah. I've always wanted a pepper Pokemon. My idea for a pepper Pokemon was the first version is a habanero, and okay. it's grass fire, which is a very okay. unique typing Sure, sure. Uh, that they've never done before. When it evolves, it should be a ghost pepper, and it should have a ghost oh. typing. I don't know which one. It, um, so I'm they're, digging that. Ghost so fire, maybe. Maybe. Th- that is a kind of popular uh, uh but the, the point yeah. the point is there's a goddamn pepper Pokemon now. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he's called Capsicid, and its evolution okay. is called Scovillain, okay. and it's based off the Ca- Carolina Reaper. It yes. Is, it is the first official Grass Fire Pokemon. Yeah. Um, nice. It's yeah, it's Grass Fire, um, which I I really like. Um, and it it just made me so I I saw it I was like that's a pepper. Because <laughs> I saw Fue Coco, right? And he's got a little stem. And I was like, is he going to turn into a fucking pepper? And he didn't. And I really like his third evolution. Um, but then I just found a pepper Pokemon. I was like, the bastards. They did it. Right. <laughs> they finally did it. And it's great. Let me ask. Let me ask. Is his first stage, like, mostly green, then second stage turning the red? Capsa Kid looks like a tiny little bird, almost. Okay. With, like... It looks like he has half an egg on his head, but it's that's not what it is when you look at him. Okay. And then when he evolves, it's a it's a, a bipedal thing with no arms and two heads. One's a red pepper and one's a green pepper. Okay. And um I thought they were going for a like one does fire, one does grass. And I think that is aesthetically what they're going for, but all the moves come out of one head because it'd be difficult to program. Sure, it. sure. Uh we'll find out in the anime. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh God, when one can only hope. Um but no, I was really excited for that, and I had to bring it up because I was like, that's my thing. I no, always cool. mention, um, and now it's finally real. Um, I like most of the Pokemon. I feel like it w- in Sword and Shield, if she starts to get annoying, you can ignore her. I feel like in short Sword and Shield, I was very iffy. There was a lot of Pokemon I loved and a lot of Pokemon I absolutely hated. I like most of them this cool. time. Uh, I think a lot of them are really cool. From what I've seen, they... I- they seem cool. Yeah. Uh, I love the dolphin. I love... I like um, the, the pig. The pig is cool. And it's Filipino. Yes. It's just cool. Yeah. Yeah, the whole uh, the whole region is uh, based on Southern America, which is refreshing. You can clearly tell that Nimona, the rival, is supposed to have an accent, which is cool. Yeah, well, you can tell just by the... Re- it's very... Uh, uh, South America? I want to guess Spain. Well, the re- yeah, the region itself is definitely based off Spain, but there you can tell there's a lot of like Latin American yeah. like uh, influence in there. Yeah, yeah, especially with like all the Day of the Dead stuff and the. Oh, see, I don't even I know nothing about that. I the 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 crocodile evolves into like a Day of the Dead skeleton oh. thing. It's cool. I might have a new top runner Pokemon. That sounds pretty badass. It's yeah. I I like all three starters. I know that there's a lot of um. Usually the starters the starters are a hot button topic. Mm. I think they're all great. I think the winner is clearly the the crocodile, and I'm not just saying that because I like fire. Is um, it crocodile? The fire starter. Oh, I guess he is technically a crocodile. I've only seen his first uh, form. Yeah, his first form looks like a fucked up Patrick Star. I'm not <laughs> into. You don't like Fue Coco? Ah, he's just the dumbest looking thing, and not in a cute way. He just. L- He's definitely the yeah. He's definitely the odd one out of the first versions, well, that's a, but the you got third. The slickest I'm talking duck in the world, right? I'm, ta- got, I'm talking specifically about the the, the top three. Yeah, I see. I don't. I don't quite know what the yeah their final forms look like. I think the loser is definitely the duck of the really? three, but they're all winners in my book. Yeah, okay, I, I like right. them a lot. You you see the duck and you're like, oh okay, and then you see how the duck like moves in battle and you're like, ooh, way more interesting than I thought it was gonna be. Because the duck, for their for the starters, for the for the first evolution, sorry, they're what would you call that? Quaxley? Yeah. The oh the the basic. Yeah, yeah, their basic form. He is my favorite of mm. the three. Looking at yeah, them. he's cool. Yeah, but I yeah. I was I was partial to Sprigatito, but I was like I gotta stick fire. I always do fire, and yeah. I'm glad I did because uh, that was really cool. Um. Uh. 
because uh, I, I really ended up liking it. Um, so, if I can, spoiler territory, talk about the end of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, the... If we have a hefty episode, we might have to move on after after that, though, if that's cool. Yes, yeah, 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 for sure. Because um, I already, I, there's, there's some things that this game is missing mm-hmm. that I think would bring it from, like, a 9 to a 10. Okay. Um... And instead of talking about it, I think I'm going to graph a video essay yes. about it. Um, I like it. But the the very end of the game, there's a big crater in the middle of the region that you're not allowed to go into until the very end of the game. Um, the game's set up into three parts. You have to do all of them. Mm-hmm. The Elite Four is not the end of the game. Okay. Um, it's just one of the three pathways. You get into the crater, and you start seeing all these crazy Pokemon. And when I say crazy Pokemon, I mean new forms of pre-existing Pokemon. Okay. So... What you learn in that moment is that... So all these Pokemon I'm seeing are basically mech versions of old Pokemon. There's okay. like a um, completely metal Tyranitar and a completely metal Hyorami, uh, or however you pronounce his name. And then I remembered that the Professor Ungabunga was dressed in like cowboy, uh, 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 caveman clothes. And I was oh. like, oh, I bet you that... Area Zero in the other game is all Pokemon from the past, and these are Pokemon from the future. Yeah. And I was totally right. So I looked up some of the past Pokemon, and I was like, these are awesome. Like, the the Violet versions are just, what if Deli Bird was made completely out of metal? But the other ones are like these crazy, like, monster, like, this is what Jigglypuff used to look like back in the Cretaceous <laughs> era or whatever. And I was like, these are really cool. And it was in that moment where uh, I was like, not ungrateful, of course, but I was curious. I was like, I wonder why Mason got me this version. Because as far as I can tell, all the Pokemon in Area Zero in Scarlet look cooler um, and are cooler and the Professor is hotter, you know? And I was like, w- I wonder why he picked this version. Um, and then I got to the very end of the game and there is a new... Uh, they all have really stupid names for some reason. The new Pokemon's called Iron Valiant. Okay. It is a uh, completely robotic, uh, almost completely chrome version of a combination between Gardevoir and Gallade. Oh, cool. So it has, like, like, uh, like pigtail buns, and it has, like, one of those weapons where, like, you hold it here, and then, like, basically the two sides are both big knives— and they can like okay. separate it and oh, make it sure, two, sure. and they can, yeah. Um, and it's um, it's fairy fighting, okay. Which is you know, Gardevoir has always been psychic and something else. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I was I was texting him and I was like, uh, obviously I appreciate it no matter what. It's a free gift. But I was curious why you brought me, bought me this one, and I think I just figured it out. <laughs> and then he was like. Yeah, that's literally exactly the reason I that's got you funny. that one. That's funny. Um, and it's like a really good Pokemon. I've been actually using it. Um, yeah, and I really like um, I really like terastalizing. I think that um, you know when they like oh the like, crystal yeah. thing on their head. Sure, sure. I really like the way it works, especially when compared to the other gimmicks, Mega Evolution, Z yeah. moves, and specifically Gigantamaxing. I hated Gigantamaxing. But I really liked Mega Evolution because it was like, ooh, Pokemon get to evolve, sort right, of, that right. didn't evolve before. And that was exciting about it. But mechanic, battle mechanics-wise, compared to terrestrializing, I like this way more. And I wouldn't be surprised if the next game also had this Yeah. instead of a new, new gimmick. I don't know. I, I really like it. I like how limiting cool. it is. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying it because we, we yeah. really weren't sure what way that was going to gonna go with you. I'm I'm very close to being done with it. Mason and I uh, have a planned meetup on Tuesday to exchange oh, cool. consoles. I've also done that yeah. with Mason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then I should be uh, and then I should be done. And then for me, I think it's on to uh, 100%ing Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah. Sorry I talked so long. That's alright. I, I really, really love these new Pokemon games. G- yeah, we're getting some good Pokemon updates. And if you want to know uh, what I would uh, change about it and how I would do the next one, uh, look out for a video essay in a couple months <laughs> or something. Sick. 
how was your week in gaming? You teased, I don't know if, I don't remember if you did it off air or not, but you teased you had like a story or something? Oh, the thing that happened today? You said something that, that was like on your mind yes. a lot. Yes, yeah, okay, I can start with that. So, you and I recently uh, went up New Hampshire yes. with other friends and members of this channel. Yes. And I decided I was going to buy a Ghastly uh, Pokemon figure because yes. it was there. It was really well done. Yes, as far as that like weirdly like looking Pokemon goes, I think they did a good job turning yes. it into a physical toy. And he's sitting on our TV. St- I look at him every day. Mm-hmm. He's sitting on our on our uh, TV stand and like I- below the. So whenever you're looking at the TV, you just yeah, look, he's right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and. I was I was looking on Instagram recently, just scrolling through, and they were showing off these really well made Pokemon figures, and I thought that this was somebody's Etsy. I was like, because I had actually followed somebody who was doing something like that recently, and he was selling like a Ganga trans uh, translucent uh, Gengar for like ninety dollars and shit. And it's okay, like all right, it's high quality, and nobody else is doing it, so like I get it. But this was uh, Pokemon uh, World Scaled Figures, is what it was called. Okay. They were all their proper size in relativity to each other. Oh. And, and the, the, the Pokedex. Like, humans. Yeah. The uh, humans the were si- also scaled. They're the, they're the size that they would be if they were real. Yes. According to the, like, Snorlax is, like, the... this big. Pikachu's, like, this big. Ash is like this big. They're all scaled the way they should be. Oh, they're scaled. Lapras to the, is like they're big. scaled to the human figure of that that it all into each with. other. Yeah, right. They're okay, all the, they're I see. all the proper scale. I thought you meant like they were actually to scale, like a, 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 a yeah. Touch anything you want. Like not like this, right? I th- but I th- but I thought what you were describing was a one to one like, and now Snorlax oh, no, is here. No. no, no. <laughs> no. To each other. They're, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, let's I say the humans mean. this big, Snorlax is yeah, this big, yeah. Pikachu's that big. Yeah. Uh, That's something that this new Pokemon game does really well, by the way. Yeah, I, know, I noticed that, too. That was cool, especially where it's open world. Like yeah, and you can just run into yeah <laughs> whatever, yeah. Um, oh, also, two shinies so far. Wasn't even trying. Oh, cool. Yeah. I got a Teddy Gerster and a Psyduck. But uh, I, my, I don't know if you remember or not, but when I got that Ghastly... I was talking about how I want to get all the original Tommy figures because I've been collecting them for years. Yeah. And I said I was holding this gasoline. I was like, if they made Pokemon figures like this today and they were to... I had a list of things. If they made all of them and they were to scale with each other and they were this quality, I'd have a really hard time not starting a collection of those. So far, two of the three of those have been crossed off. Mm. They are to scale. They're high quality I don't know if they make every single Pokemon, but they have right. sets. They they came out with the Kanto set. Then they had like a Misty set, which was still Kanto region Pokemon. And I saw a Johto uh, region set, um, but it's it's tempting. Mm. I've been doing a lot of research into <laughs> that today. Yeah. Um, but I need to discuss with my wife first. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I was gonna say I'm not one to to govern how you use your money but i feel like there is someone who yes. who is no that would, <laughs> it would have to be a talk there would have to be a realistic place to put these things but um man are they that cool. also probably is going to play a bigger factor than do we have the money for it yeah no but yeah making sure we have a place for them yeah but um yeah i've been thinking about that a lot uh, when she gets home i'm definitely going to show her <laughs> um but Besides that, I've been playing a lot of Elden Ring. Fuck yeah! Yeah. Speaking of, uh, speaking of open world. Yeah. Speaking of franchises that used to not be open world. Yeah. If this game wasn't open world, I don't think I'd like it very much. But since it is, and since I can say, all right, fuck that, I'm gonna go over here. Well, see, that's the thing. Bloodborne and Dark Souls Three and all them, they are technically open world, but they're open world in the sense of like, it, it, it's basically like a li- it's like zelda it's like a linear open world where it's like you could go to zora's domain right away but like don't yeah nothing's gonna happen or y- yeah or in the case of dark souls it's like you're gonna get fucked up because okay. it's way too hard over there 
So like they are open world. They're 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 not. It's not like level one, level two. Yeah. It, but it this is like legit open world, yeah. like Breath of the Wild vibes. And I'm liking it a lot. One issue I'm running into, I've gotten to like the Lake. Lu- I keep wanting to say Lucaria. Oh but yeah, it yeah, yeah. That? It's it is Lucaria, right? Okay, yeah. Or yeah, I think I believe it's Lucaria. Yeah, you're you're trying to get into the magic school. Yeah, yeah. I, so you uh, beat the the sorry, you beat Stormvale. Yes. You beat the nice. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Um, and I did like something. I'm sure you'd only think about. I did something accidentally where I'm sure if you watch somebody be like, um trying to like 100% the game or something they'd be like oh well if you want you should do this but like there's a good chance you could miss it I got uh, Godric's room right oh yeah and the shackle well he has an axe oh well, sorry you're so not talking about the thing that like holds him down or whatever right that's someone else right mm-hmm. you're talking about the rune that you like implant into the back of your skull or whatever. Yeah, well when he dies, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, okay, when he yeah. Dies. Yeah. I went to um from a fucking walking island and it's got the bell under it. Yeah. Those are cool. I uh, yeah. I figured out how to make it stop. I went inside and it was like, Do you want to duplicate the rune? And I was like, that's not what I'm here for, but sure, I don't even know what this rune does. It does that. Well no. Then you go back to the uh Hide the round table. Yeah, and once you complete, I'm the like story in the round table. The back door is open. You talk to the woman there, and you can get Godric's axe. Yeah, but if you duplicated the rune, you can get the dragon head as well. Yeah, so the way that works this is kind of similar to other Dark Souls games. The way that works is each boss rune. Mm. What you can do is you can totally smash it and get a fuck ton of yeah, runes if you want. Yeah, like 20,000. Or you can exchange it for one of two things. Usually it's a spell or a weapon. Mm. Um but in this game, if you go to the the like you said, if you go to the walking buildings, you can duplicate them, but you can only use each walking building once. So you have to pick and choose which oh, runes you want to okay. uh duplicate. Cool. But and there's like a it's complicated. There's like a short list of like, well, these three have access to these runes, and then these ones. Have, yeah, it's I, it was just cool because I accidentally did it the way it they still, wanted. Yeah, me to. yeah, yeah. Because there were so many opportunities where I could have like I saw twenty thousand. I could have just immediately been like, I want the twenty. 000. Right. It didn't even check to see if it does anything. Else. Right. You're like, well, this is a rune. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then I was like, ah, there's probably reason it's worth that much. Probably right. Does yeah. Something. And before I even figured out what the fuck it did, I went to that, to the, to the to the island, the walking building. Yeah. And I was like, duplicate. Well, if nothing else, I have forty thousand runes now. <laughs> so I was like, sure. Right. Um, I have a question yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, I forget what they're called, but you can like summon homies in this game. Oh, the wolves. Yeah. Wait, y- y- I was gonna say, which one's your favorite? The so wolves. Far? The wolves. Yeah, the wolves are really not good. only the wolves, but now I've found out you can spirit tune, which makes them better. Oh yes, yeah. So yeah, you can upgrade them like you would a weapon. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I've yeah. been upgrading the, the the wolves kick ass. So if you're in the lake of Lucaria, have you met the giant turtle yet? Yes. That's what our turt wig is named after, Muriel, in our nuzzle. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Pope turtle, Pope Pope turtle. Yes. <laughs> Everybody calls him uh, a dog. Everybody calls turtles dogs because <laughs> I'm guessing you can't use the word turtle. I think you totally can. I think it's just like it became a meme. There's no stronger community than, <laughs> than those the one motherfuckers who who put put out the messages. I love that shit. It's like dog, dog, and you yeah. realize it's like big important dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like ooh. Um, one was like I've found God. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I still can't figure it out. I don't know if you've ever gone into the messaging system. Why is um, it's something like ornate astrolabe? Like that's one of the phrases you can use, and oh. I can't figure out why. They they knew what they were doing with the words that they decided you can use. Oh yeah, but for the longest that's rollover time, from uh, Dark Souls. Oh, I figured. Yeah, so t- this community seems tight knit enough. I didn't think it just started out <laughs> of nowhere. Yeah, but um. Uh, I also love Pope Turtle. <laughs> um, 
please, Pope Turtle was my father. Call me <laughs> Turtle Pope. <laughs> but when I first started, I knew nothing about these messages. I right. thought the game had put them in. Mm. I was like, oh, there's a lot of cheeky well, some ones some of them here. they did. Oh, okay. L- uh, specifically at the beginning. Oh, you, you sure. You probably saw first. a bunch of like, yeah, now yeah. hit left. Right. You know, yeah. They, but they were all just the same style. Yeah. And <laughs> I used to, uh, that's why I've come to the conclusion that there's got to be a limited amount of words that you can use. Because yes. nobody is like. Oh, have you not tried to make one? No. Yeah, it's literally like you f- you have to like find a format and the format will be like blank of the blank is blank. And then yeah. you have to fill in the blanks, but you can't write your you can't type your own. You have, It's like a drop down. Yeah. And it'll be like species expletives you know stuff right. like that there was there was there's been a couple that i love because um, they don't want people to just be like hit this wall it's a secret bitch right 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 no and i i like how mysterious they yeah. are i like trying to guess like what they're trying to tell me yeah but um there was one the dude who like just hangs on the wall in the round table and he refuses to talk to you and then it turns out he's actually uh d- uh something you have to fight down mm, the line yes yeah um somebody just had edgelord <laughs> yes <laughs> oh yes i love that for him that's so great but uh and i also love um all just all the finger jokes oh yeah in in yeah. the uh butthole yes that that one is that one has been there for a while like there'll be like a corpse laid over yes uh, uh, a coffin with an item on it and you pick up the item and it's like, oh, 3,000 souls. And then you read the message and it's like, finger, butthole, now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you met um, a dude at the table who's like looking at the map? Yes. Yeah. Um, Has he given you like the list of bosses you're yep. supposed to kill you? Did you notice that they all start with G, R, or M? No. Because... The game was written by George R. R. Martin. Oh, funny. Good. I it's didn't like, notice. It's like Godric, Melania, Rom. They're all yeah. That's funny. I yeah. didn't notice, but that's that's good. <laughs> um I I'm I haven't tested this enough yet, but I am starting to realize any NPC that you can use your weapon in front of is killable. It, including the Turtle Pope. Oh no shit. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, you can kill Turtle Pope. It is sad. I can confirm. Does it give you anything? Uh, Barely. I think it was like... Damn. I think it was like a ring I would never use and like 400 souls or like some like... Damn. Like, like uh, clearly the the gift is like, hey, bud, this wasn't worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I think he's also like a shop, right? He like teaches you spells or something. Yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. losing that as well. They kept saying, go there at night. There's an enemy, though. The message is... But I did in nothing happen. There is an enemy there at night. I think you have to beat the Lucaria Academy first. Okay. Or something. Okay. I don't know. It it's it if it's if you see a message like that, usually it's not a lie. Usually it's just like, all right, it'll activate later. Sure. Because at, at a certain point in the game, there's fucking a ton of enemies at night that aren't there during the day. Yeah. That you can just like stumble into. Um. So I'm sure that's. I'm sure whoever put that message is accurate. Um, but you're just not at that part. We're yet, sure, or sure. I'm I, glad you're liking it. I made a choice. I made an active choice. I did. The, I started to do the uh, height. The guy. The guy's name is Height. A H A I G H T. He has a fort like bottom right of the map. Oh. You have to like go save his fort. Is is like part one of his quests. Yeah. Does um, he? Is that the guy who wants a key to the academy? No, he wants to 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 rule. That's a, he he's like from the proper lineage who's supposed to rule. Oh, but because I, I remember Fort Height, I don't remember Height. The guy individual side he quest. He was he was on like you know those things that act as bridges. They're like definitely a. He's just hanging out on one of those. There's a bunch of uh, sub demi human, subhuman, whatever they are underneath him. Um, oh, 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 I know who you're talking about. He, I, So I did part one. Yeah. And then he was like, that's awesome. I'm going to knight you. Come meet me at the castle. I'm, we'll, we'll do it up. Um, so I go there. 
and gives me some load of bullshit, mm-hmm. and he wants me to do something. I, fuck, I, I squared up. Yes. Oh my god. I was gonna say when he, I because as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, I remember who you're talking about. I was gonna reveal after you were done that when he was like, here's this shitty reward for the doing the thing that I did. I also started to hit him. <laughs> Good. Yes. Um, and that was the moment I found out that you could. Because I was like, I th- they didn't prompt me to fight this No, man. they don't, which is funny I that... I chose. That oh, so neither of us know how the story continues for him. No, that fuck that guy. No, I, I'm <laughs> in the same boat. I mean, I probably did a cursory Google search to see what you get if you if you kill him versus not he, killing him. He gave me um something I'm pretty sure is important. It's like half the medallion. Oh, that that's I'm what it is. He, th- at the end of his quest, he'll he'll give you that, I think, but that's it. So if you just kill him, you get it. And that's, like, the only situation in the game where that's the... Because I think they expect players to hate this dude. Yeah, you suck. Yeah. Fort Height, though, that was a good area. I like that area. Yeah. It was uh, um, the bear, challenging. The, like, bear skeleton in there. It's not a skeleton, though. It's just, like, a corpse. Of, oh, yeah. Um, I just like that inclusion that they're using, like, the wildlife as... Because it had chain mail on and shit. Mm. I, I thought it was cool. Yeah. Um, That's cool. Uh... Have you met um oh what the fuck was his name? Have you met Wolf Dude yet? Oh, he was like a tree and then I made him not a tree. There was this little guy. No, not him. He's 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 neat. No, this guy, he has a wolf head for a head. He's shown up in the artwork in the loading screen. Yes, but you haven't No, I haven't. Okay. No worries. Okay. Um, I forget his name, but he's cool. Kill I remember. Him I immediately, remember Wolf Dude on. is hot. Wolf Dude. Is, oh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say no to that. <laughs> um, Wolf Dude is pretty hot. Not the hottest what in the we, game, though. What we got in chat? Oh, it's right. It's on the screen right now. Not the hottest in the game. Hottest in the game definitely goes to uh, a Queen Melania, um, or Queen Regent Melania, whatever her title is. Which left or right? The redhead. Oh, I would have said. Um, uh, that one. <laughs> uh, I believe can see it's off screen. The, uh, we're 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 comparing. I have artwork of Melina and Melania on the on my wall. So you like uh you like Tutorial Girl more than? If I had to pick, I w- that's I mean I I don't know what she looks like really. She has a helmet on. Mm. Well, she never takes that helmet off. So. Well. Anyways, yeah. um. I don't know Ronnie though. Okay, now we're fighting. <laughs> Which one's that? The blue girl. Have you met the blue girl with the six arms? No. Then, uh, interesting. Then I don't know how you're summoning people, because I thought that she gave you the summoning thing. But maybe I'm wrong. Anyways, it doesn't matter. None of it matters. Um, 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 except it definitely does matter, and you are wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, but cool. Are we news time? Yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so, um... Let's get a poll in chat, though. Should I buy those Pokemon uh, figures or not? <laughs> um, They're to scale, Anthony. I know. I know. To scale with each other. And I'm pretty sure to scale with the figures from the Tommy figures. Like, the, the human figures. Oh, I see. Also, I can get Professor Oak. That's cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <coughs> okay. Um... Yeah, a couple small things and then the big ones. So, uh, this is not really news. I just thought this was neat i wanted to talk about it um so at the beginning of the podcast the stream we were listening to the soundtrack to uh maximo versus the army of zin um which was for ps2 um i didn't know this game existed so on the nes there was a game called ghost and goblins i'm sure you've seen it i'm sure you've heard the music from it um we've played it i don't believe we have have to, maybe we did i don't know it's brutally difficult it's like notoriously the we most did play it. we played like a level of it okay not on stream right right no back when uh yeah yeah that we probably played Go- ghouls and goblins yes, which was the snes was. remake yes, yes, yeah. yes yeah so that so uh the maximo series i guess was a ps2 like spiritual successor it was made by the same people it had some of the same music um and they were both made by capcom um but i was looking up stuff for the uh the beginning of stream and i saw that maximo versus the army of zin and i was like i don't think that's what that game is called turns out the game i was remembering is called maximo uh glory of ghosts and this is a sequel i didn't even know there was a sequel cool um so i'm gonna fucking i'm gonna go find that and play it okay 
Um, <laughs> not not really, <laughs> not really news in the big the, no, the no. big sense. But no, not at all. <laughs> um, so uh, we don't usually cover stuff like this, but I thought it was very cool. There's a new game on Switch, and I'm sure other stuff too. It's called Colossal Cave, and okay. if you if you recognize that title, that's because Colossal Cave is one of, if not the first ever uh, text-based adventure video game. Oh, cool. Like that AI thing you and I used to use? Yeah, except back except when... Except it's got a story. Except, well, yeah, and except back when that was all video games were. Yeah. You know? Um, so, this is a remake. This is a completely 3D first-person remake, um, which at first I was like, okay, I don't know if we need this, but then I found out that it's being remade by the original creator. That's cool. It's being remade by Roberta Williams, who is responsible for, um, you know, all the the famous like point and clicks, um, King's Quest, um, Space Quest. I think the space one is called Monkey Island. All those. Um, so I thought that was really cool and worth mentioning. Um, and it's out yeah. now, I guess. Um, so go play it. Um, and then I had an article saved last time um, that I wanted to get into, and I'm going to get into it now. Um, so uh, this is an article that uh, raised uh, 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 a talking point that I thought was interesting. Okay. So the developers of the game, The Division, Tom Clancy's The Division, um, said that trophies, like PlayStation trophies and achievements and whatnot, um, are quote bad for gaming. Oh. Um. He, this is the exact tweet. Unpopular opinion. Achievements slash trophies have have been bad for gaming. It narrows games down. It disrupts and diverts attention, and it eats resources that could have been that could have made the game better. Um. I can't speak on that last part, obviously. The, the eating resources that. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I can't help but disagree. Um, because I feel like he's sort of right. I feel like trophies can do that, but I feel like that's just up to the person making the trophies to make them not bullshit. Like, and I, I think he's referring to, like, completionists mm. who, like, every game they play, they need to get all the trophies, and if they can't, maybe they don't play a game they would have ended up liking. Right. And... Honestly, that I would call an issue with the consumer because, like, if if you're a long-time Assassin's Creed fan and a new Assassin's Creed drops and everyone loves it and you're like, the trophies are bad, though, so I'm not going to play it, then yeah, get get over it. Yeah. But um, I think just – I don't know. I don't know if I agree well, with the broad, like, these are bad. I'll, I, I agree with you there. He brings up a, a really interesting point that's annoyed me enough that I – do have an issue with it, but it's overall gaming and it's not just trophies. I don't like in-game notifications. Oh, okay. I wish you could shut them off. You can. You can. I'm going to. <laughs> Where? Yeah. I assume just just the in the settings. Yeah. I mean, you could on PlayStation Four, but yeah, you can you can shut off uh, trophy notifications and all that. Well, here's the thing. I I want to shut off all notifications while I'm playing a game. Yeah, I will. I'll be happy to get them when I'm when I'm on my home screen of my PS5. I don't. I don't want to know that there's an update for an app I haven't used in six months. While you're playing Elden Ring. What, yeah, while I'm in a boss fight. I so don't what give is a shit. And so, what is your opinion specifically of like you just beat a boss and it says boss defeated and then blink you did it. I. I I'd shut it off. I would shut it off personally. I don't think it's a huge hindrance on the game, mm. but I don't like in-game notifications. No, in that I, I feel that too. It's And it's not just in-game notifications. It's also, uh, did you know that there's a new update for a right. game you haven't right. played in a few years, even though you are currently trying to watch Netflix? Right. No, I do not. You know what? Even better. I said in-game. In-app. In app, yeah. In-game. Don't. I I wish there was a way. I let me re let me remake my wish. Mm. I wish there was a way to shut them off. I wish the the system knew I'm in the middle of of consuming content, and I don't want that right now. 
I'll be more than happy to look at it once I'm back on the home screen. You're gonna you're gonna see if that's you know what? Should I bring it up? Hold on. Are we are we connected? Uh no, we're oh, not. Oh okay. Um, Swap the words rewards for motivation. Oh, hold on. Okay, sorry. I read that out of context. I'm not a big fan of um extrins ooh, that's a neat word. Uh extrinsic? Yes, you pronounce it correctly. Extrinsic rewards in video games. But trophies are not as high on the list as many uh, other problems now. Okay, that's fair. Uh, swap the word reward for rewards for motivation. Okay, so what I'm looking at right now is it says these are things you can shut on and off. Allow pop-up notifications, show preview, play sound, display time. That's how long it stays up on the screen. Yeah. But then if you go down here, let's just click on trophies. My options are show pop-ups and then during games, during videos, and during broadcasts. Oh, interesting. And it, what's interesting? What's interesting is that let me go to um game updates. Uh, no, how do I what downloads and copies? Ah, see, I don't want to know about uh, downloads during uh, while I'm watching YouTube. I just don't. It's fair. So they are highly customizable. I don't think your perfect version yeah, of right, it exists. Right. You want like, if right, I shut all I've, those I've off, then nine, I don't get them. Right. Well, they'll still proc but you have to go find them right so what right. you're what you want and i think i like your version better what you want is we're on this screen that home right screen. no what you want is you've been playing elden ring for nine hours and you're like well time to call it a night let me close elden ring oh i got three achievements in the last nine hours yeah. um that seems not possible but there is a way to uh shut them off that's good least. to know because i am definitely going to do that because uh they're just annoying and they're but a distraction right no i agree in terms of ruining the gameplay from a completionist standpoint, I feel like that's up to the game developer because I recently played God of War Ragnarok, right? Yeah. And the – assuming you're really good at the game and you don't get stuck on the boss fights like I did, the 100 percenting the game to getting all the – to platinuming the game is like a half hour of work. So why not, you know? Sure. Oh, I just beat the game. How many trophies do I have left? Oh, two. Oh, I'll go do those right now. But if we're talking like um, perfect example, Final Fantasy 15, I got every trophy in Final Fantasy 15 completely naturally, even getting all my characters to level 99. I just happened to get them all. But in Final Fantasy 15, you got four dudes, the members of Green Day, <laughs> and they all have a thing they do. Yeah. The th you only play as one of them. The three you don't play as do their thing on their own. And you have to do these things in order to level them up. So, like, three-fourths of the way through the game, they're at level 10. I, I have them all at level 10, and they're, like, weird thing they do. I got a trophy for each one. Mm -hmm. I look at my dude. My dude's still at two because you have to actively fish in order to get your main dude's level up. So I literally beat that game, got every single trophy except one, and then for the next year and a half, every time I booted up that game, I was like, time to fish for 20 minutes. Because also, fishing is bad in that game. Yeah. I actively don't like fishing in video games unless it's really good, and it's not good in that game. I eventually got it. I have platinumed uh, Final Fantasy 15, But it was just like, this is ruining it for me. Because yeah. I'm right there. And I'm going to be right there See, that for as like, long as this takes. That sounds like an issue with Final Fantasy as that's opposed what I'm to yeah okay, right no I, that's what I, and that's I, what yeah, I'm saying we're on the same page I I don't have sure. any issue with any of the trophies in the new God of War or any given Dark Souls game but Final Fantasy 15 really put a bad taste in my mouth and now I've yeah. like got my eye on Square Enix the people who make Kingdom Hearts so I, as you're about to go into your Kingdom Hearts 100 percent yes I hear you um so the main topic of today's discussion mm. um, has to do with Wizards of the Coast, the company. Oh, yes. Okay, so we're putting that here. Right, that makes sense. Yes. Mm. Um, so, um, I think what I'm going to do for this part is basically just read everything that Mason sent me. Um, okay. There's some legal jargon, uh, but I think Mason does a pretty good job of explaining it all. Um, now, I follow Dungeons & Dragons like uh, the official Dungeons and Dragons on on Facebook and mm. shit like that, and I, I did see that something was going on. Yeah, they they were you know getting a lot of fan support, uh, in a lot of reaching out, which I, and I was like, what is going on? 
Yeah, so there's so many so much positive happening in the world of D and D right now. So here's what happened. Yeah. Um. Also, is there a new message from someone in chat? I just don't have chat. No, no. Oh, okay. Um. Okay. So this is all from the mouth of Drizzle from Thunderlining Gaming. Yes. Uh. So since I thought y'all might. Oh, on January fourth, an article came out detailing how Wizards of the Coast, the owners of Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to be deauthorizing their open gaming license oh, for Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. The open gaming license is a legal document that lets third parties make content for D&D, like Critical Role uh, and Lord of the Rings and the Dark Souls tabletop RPG. But it also lets them make games loosely inspired by D&D, like Call of Cthulhu and Pathfinder and the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic video game, which all basically use D&D 3.5 as their base. Yeah. Um... And it was designed so that it could, couldn't could be changed or taken away later according to the people who made it. The article from January 4th said that they were doing away with that license and that in order to keep publishing things, you would have to sign a new one, which included a 25% royalty fee if your company makes over $750,000, uh, of which there was no royalty fee in the original deal. Uh, needing to report your income if you make over 50000 a year, and Wizards of the Coast being able to use your content without your permission or attribution. Oh, they were doing, they were walking the tightrope pretty well right until, until that they last bit. until they said we want to do a Rick and Morty, Stranger Things, multiverse, uh, Lord of the Rings thing, and you can't tell us that we can't, neener right. neener. That almost sounds illegal. So that's you, what I said. So you want people to pay you for your IP but you in turn will legally refuse to pay for their IP. Correct. Here's the deal. Dungeons and Dragons has survived four decades now. Uh, five. Five decades. Five decades. Yeah. Um, yeah? Yeah, five. Uh, six. Six decades. Oh, shit. Um, 73, right, I think? Oh, I was counting the '80s, but yeah, no, you're no, right. No, it started the, in the '70s. The early, yeah, the early stuff. Um, did happen late '70s. Anyways, uh, just for reference, the uh, open gaming license started uh like 2001 or 2002, something like that. Oh yeah, well that was what, yeah, yeah. I don't think that they were making those in the in the set or even the '80s, but um, they definitely des- There's a lot of content out there in the world w- that's either directly or indirectly influenced by the tabletop RPG Dungeons and Dragons but yeah. then you get into this wormhole of what is Dungeons and Dragons if not uh Tolkien's <laughs> well, inspiration. Yeah. Um, well yeah, their original stuff. But where right. there this this all just this all just has to deal with like mechanics. If your game has any similarity to D and D, oh, we're I gonna get say it. Legally, it was inspired by that, and now you owe us money. And and frankly, I can get behind them for that. I think that's fair. I think they invented tabletop RPGs and maybe RPGs in general. I mean, you got to assume that the early uh, NES games and stuff like that had to have had some inspiration based off of the D&D oh, tabletop yeah, totally. RPG yeah. as to how they're they're going to structure their game. Yeah, that's game. interesting. I'd be wonder I'd I'd wonder the uh, I'd be curious of the etymology of the term yeah. role playing game. Um no. so yeah, so with the yeah. new uh, thing that they're trying to do, uh, they'd also be able to revoke your ability to publish if they find any of the content you produce harmful, discriminatory or illegal, which I think is probably fine. And Wizards of the Coast being able to change the terms of the license at any time with 30 days notice. Here, yeah. So here's can I can I continue my my thought process on on this information? Well, there is new. There's been updates since then. Okay. Okay. I just yeah. If you want to get, do you want to give those first? Yeah, I just want I just want to finish what. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this caused a huge backlash, which ultimately led to over forty thousand people canceling their D and D Beyond subscription. Uh, Wizards of the Coast put out a statement on the 13th, which didn't go over well because uh, people said it felt too corporate and also called the leak a draft despite it being confirmed by the journalist source and an employee at Kickstarter who had to negotiate a deal that would reduce royalties to 20% if the product was from Kickstarter. Then, earlier this week, 
another statement was put out that sounded much more sincere, saying that they were going to publish further drafts in a way that would allow the community to vote on them. The first draft was released yesterday, and it's open for community feedback as of today. Wow. This draft looks much more reasonable. First, Wizards of the Coast would not own the license. It would become a third party under the Creative Commons. Uh, there are also no royalties or reporting of income. They can't use kind of with every permission. They, uh, the only thing they can change is the license. In the license are the ways that you can – they can contact you and cite your work if you allow them to use it. Instead of completely getting rid of the open game license, this new license would allow works already published – with it to continue being published, but new works would have to be under the new license. It also keeps the change. It also keeps the change that would allow Wizards of the Coast to terminate your license to use their product if you publish harmful, discriminatory, illegal content in any ways that act uh, content or act in ways that Wizards says is harmful or discriminatory. Uh, this sounds good, but Wizards of the Coast has also used this clause before on the DMs Guild, a website where you can publish third-party material for sale to take down supplements with clear representation uh, and that are anti-capitalist. Uh, so Drizzle's opinion, I'm hopeful. It seems like they're making a lot of steps in the right direction, and I want to continue being able to support third-party content creators in the Dungeons & Dragons space. Yeah. I, I think that's a great uh, summary from Drizzle. I think I think he's right on the money. I, I, I'm... I'm at a crossroads here because I, on one side of the coin, I get it. There's been so many D and D ripoffs that have just been allowed to go, which I didn't even realize they they were allowing it to happen. I thought it was just nobody gave a shit. You made you made D and D in some basement, and then somebody said, "I'm gonna actually make this," and, right? And that's how it came to be, and nobody questioned it, right? And I'm I'm curious how deep it goes. Like obviously, if you use Five E as a base, yeah, they get credit. But like, does it go as far as to like, well, my TTRPG uses dice, and it's like, well, well hold on, partner. If I have stats, does that right, mean that yeah. I that I owe D and D something? Yeah, that's because I can think of I can think of a number number of TTRPGs that uh, play nothing like D and T. Right. Well, that's I I'm curious how I want to know their patent. I want to know what they own. Right. If I obviously they're original characters. Sure. But even they see this is my issue. It's almost like when somebody uh, sues somebody for for ripping off their song, but they have also ripped off somebody <laughs> else's song. It's yeah. like it's like, do you want whoever uh, who I knew I knew who owned the rights to Tolkien stuff. Now I can't remember. But like, should they come after D and D? Right. It's like when does it stop? Right. When do, when do you say uh, enough's enough? But well, that's why I think the Tolkien inspiration plays no part of it because the, the we're not talking about like the the, the world characters, of right, right, right? We're literally just talking about the mechanics. The mechanics of but the But where does that stop? No, exactly. Yeah. If yeah. I have stack conditions, do I fucking own D do I owe D and D right. some money? Does Pokemon owe D and D right. money because right. it's technically an RPG? The yeah, next Pokemon game that comes out, is it is it See, this is where they went too far, and it's I think just they've rock, already. Paper, scissors. Yeah. <laughs> I, I <laughs> Every think... Pokemon has one type, and it's a <laughs> it's a loosely based like fire emblem. Like, are you fire? Well, I'm grass, so you. So win. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I I think they they've already. You can't own other people's fucking shit. No, cause, that cause... that was the part that I'm glad you were like that yeah. sounds illegal because that was my thought too. I was like, this doesn't seem okay. No, that part I was like. I was like, oh, man, this sucks, but they can do whatever they want up until you said that you wanted to steal my shit right. for your shit. Right. Unless so – here, I guess this is where my initial thought is going to conclude. Unless somebody sat down, copied one of their editions exact, mm. made a few slight changes, and said, here it is. Here's, here's how our game's going to work. Here's the basic outline of the game. I don't think they've got a leg to stand on if it's not done that way. Mm. And and trust me, it's an easy out. I could see a lot of games doing that. I'm sure a ton of games have done that. Oh yeah. But a ton of like really high profile like D and D alternatives like yeah. Pathfinder yeah. and Call of Cthulhu and all these games that I've like heard mentioned in the same breath as D and D like numerous times. Sure. Like people will be like, you know, TTRPGs like D&D &D and right. all these other ones. But if I make a video game 
and mm. it's an RPG. Yeah. And it has stat conditions. And I made my own system of how those stats and stat conditions work. Fuck you. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, I think that's there. I think that's why Elden Ring isn't in trouble, but Knights of the Old Republic is because you play Knights of the Old Republic, it's literally D and D. Yeah. Okay. That's. Yeah, I just. I'd like to know, and I guess I don't need to know as a consumer. Yeah. But I would well, like to thing. know where the line is drawn. That's the thing. I feel for all the people this is going to affect if they do this the way they want to, and I feel for our friend Mason. I'm sort of like, that really sucks, but I can still play my private game with my friends, and that's what I want to do, you yeah. know? So this isn't, like, necessarily affecting me, but it does suck that it's affecting so right. much of this community. It's, you, you know, you just, you what you do is you buy Hogwarts Legacy secondhand. That's what you do. Or... Don't buy it at all. No, but if you want to play game. it, if you want to play it, I don't. You just buy it pre-owned, and then nobody except you know what? You go to your local game shop. You don't go to GameStop. You go to your local shop. You wait till they have a copy of it. And you buy it, and then they got the money, and nobody else did. And that's how we're gonna stop global warming. Oh. I just I needed to go a you, third degree you, I, I, yes. away from what okay. we were talking about. You I I really thought I knew that sentence was gonna end. <laughs> but uh yeah, no. Uh protests to Hogwarts legacy and the oz- holes in the ozone layer will just fill up. Yeah. They'll fill back up. Um <laughs> Yeah, but uh that this reminds me so much of when Xbox was like, you can't exchange games. Remember when they were like, if you buy an Xbox One game, it'll be oh, yours, yeah, yeah. and it won't play. It'll be Anthony's copy of Hitman Two won't play on Chris's Xbox because it's like, re, like local coded to him. And then Sony was like, that's neat. We're not gonna fucking do that. <laughs> and Xbox was like, oh no, neither were we. It's fine. We're not gonna. We're not gonna do that. No, no, no. We we didn't. Yeah. didn't even. Why did you you made it weird <laughs> by bringing it up that we were gonna do that? That was a prank. It feels like I that where they're just that. like where they're just like, what if we did something really shitty and we made all the money and everyone was like, um, bye and they were like, no no, no just kidding, come back, come back, no 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 yeah. no, 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 no. We didn't say we were gonna do that. <laughs> we were just saying what if? And now that we know you fucking hate that, we're gonna back it. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna back out. We're gonna, we, it was sorry, we was stupid. It was D and D is more popular now than it's probably ever been. They gotta slow their roll. They're getting a little money hungry over there at Wizards of the Coast. Wizards oh, yeah. of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast. Yeah. The people who used to distribute. They're pissed. They're pissed about that. That's what it is. They lost a shit ton of money on Pokemon, <laughs> and they fucking know it. That's what they're mad about. That's what that's what the stick up their ass is about. <laughs> They wish they still had fucking. I wish they still had Pokemon because they. Well, here's but, why I here's why I think that point as funny as it is is mute. They do still have uh, Magic the Gathering. Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. <laughs> That's the they're doing fucking fine. Oh yeah. Um, what is? I'm sorry. Everything I published has been on the uh, DM Guild, so I wasn't under the. Oh, do you make? Does Mason make D and D stuff? He does. S- like sells it. Uh, I don't know about selling it, but. Th- it doesn't matter if he sells it. This shitty new thing they're trying to do would affect um, his stuff if it was under no. the open game license, but it's not because it's on DM's guild. That's bullshit. If I make a video game about Mickey Mouse and I hand it out to people, they can't do jack shit to me. It's fucking free. I mean... It's free. I'm not making any money off of it. That's not true because they always... the, the they, they will always... Um, like fan fan games will exist for moments before they're taken down by like That's the most true. famous the one. This guy, Pokemon Uranium, the the the, the, the biggest, most, uh, like well done, best working, high, like budget, uh, Pokemon fan game. It's in production for like eleven years. It got taken down an hour after it was officially published. I wonder if there's ways you could like rip that. No. Really? I mean, I'm sure people have it. I'm sure you can g- find it from somewhere, but like, they like, they 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 fucking the full force of the 
like and uh, they weren't selling Japanese it. Japanese government. No, Pokemon Uranium was completely free. Every every build up until the official one was free, and then the official one was free. And as soon as they were like, "It's out," Pokemon slash Nintendo was like, "Hello, <laughs> please," and by "please" I mean take this down now. We hate you. <laughs> um. So a I don't little, think you little extra. We hate you. I don't think what you said. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you got to take this down. Also, we hate you. <laughs> um, <laughs> good luck. Good luck. I just don't understand. I, j- I just don't. I guess I just don't understand. <laughs> yeah. No. That's and that's what sucks about stories like this because like I want to be here like debating this, but like there's a lot of legal like like you said. It's like some of this is like I don't know. Sounds like they can do that if they want. It sucks, but like it sounds like they can do that. But then uh, some of it is clearly like that's sketch, and you're a yeah. big corporation, and you should know that what you're yeah. saying sounds sketch. It's a bit over the top. Essentially, what they were like is you're gonna pay for our stuff, but we're not gonna we're pay not, for your well, stuff. Well, yeah, that's yeah. You want to put Drizzt Jordan in your game? That will be fifty k. But if we're gonna put Morty in a <laughs> right in our, in our in our fucking our next book of characters, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a Morty boss fight. <laughs> um. And I did mean Rick, but I said Morty, so it is. It's funnier, a funnier image, just a Morty res- boss fight, a hyper realistic Morty in that like D and D artwork <laughs> in the book, just like oh, what? <laughs> that's, that's weird. And then you fucking turn the page, and Hermione Granger is there, and you're like, oh, it just keeps going. Okay, I'm gonna close this book. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm glad we delved into that because, um, yeah. Don't be sh- don't be shitty D and D. Come on now. The Beholder, each eye stock of the Beholder has a different hat, which is a reference to something they technically own now because they're being shitty about That's it. That's the thing. What, they think they're fucking... They, they, they're trying <laughs> to be like Disney, but like doing an ass backwards. They're doing some like backdoor deal shit to become uh, owning all these IPs. No, it, it really feels like people who were passionate about tabletop RPGs back in the early 2000s were like, this open game license thing seems really cool, and we're going to do it, and then cut to last week... And some corporate assholes are like, we could make money if we screw well, over the people who signed up for that. I was on their, I was, I was, I, they, they made, they lost out on a lot of money, and they did when they made that agreement in the early two thousands. However, they're trying to overcorrect now, which for the for their own benefit, right? Yeah, there's a happy medium where right. you say, hey, you know, we we made we've made what. You know, you you put your own costume on what right. we made. Right. Give no, us a little thing. something gotta, for it. It's gotta. And I think we're getting to a point with this, like you know, this feedback loop that we have right now, where we are gonna get to that middle ground, yeah. and I think everyone's gonna be just fine at the end of this. But it really should be a case by case situation where it's like, okay, Pathfinder is way too close to D and D. You're gonna owe us some money, but um. Quest of Yore, you can you can fuck. That's fine. You, you don't. We don't need to mess with you. Uh, maybe Knights of the Old Republic. You're Disney. Maybe we don't. You know, it just should be a case by case. Like, let's look at how much D and D influence you have in your. Well, product. that's what I'm saying. There's got to be a line. There's got to be a point where you say, if these mechanics are in the game, you owe D and D money. And I'm sure there is. I'm not an idiot. I'm sure that right. line exists. I just wish the public knew. For people like Mason, who might want to do this and you know if he kicks I didn't even know that I this is fresh information for me about our friend Mason but if he's publishing stuff that's D&D like and he says you know if I tweak this a bit I could sell it as my own then it would be nice if he knew where the line was right sorry I just I had a thought that was it consuming my all you have to do change one letter you change one r to a w my game's called dungeons and dragons <laughs> and everything is the exact same come at me <laughs> do something sorry you were making a good point i was giggling because i couldn't stop thinking of dungeons and dragons i was waiting for <laughs> you to be like mason does sell this shit he's been doing this forever i thought you were just gonna like hit me with no the, this i was whole aspect of his life i knew nothing about. no no meanwhile i'm just like shit posting in my own brain so, over here Ooh, so we got more info okay so if you publish yeah. things with dungeons and dragons ip like beholders owl bears drizz jordan uh it has to be published on the dm's guild which already gives wizards a 25 percent cut oh okay then fuck off <laughs> then 
Then it sounds like you're already getting. It sounds well, like. Well, see, that's character IP though. Now they they're coming at you for game mechanics. Yeah, I. Yeah, I. So if you make something with an owl bear in it and it has similar mechanics to D and D, you now owe them fifty percent. Is that what I'm hearing? No, you 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 owe them a twenty five percent royalty fee if your company makes over seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which was okay. not there originally. I just need to do an income income report. Is the like, like okay, Dad, like <laughs> just let me fucking play D and D, Jesus. Um, that's gonna do it for us for the game. Uh, I can't wait podcast. till. So they start charging you per session for your homebrew. I know, right? You're, it's almost like it's it's almost getting to the point where it's like, you know, you you made a copy of your VHS of the Titanic, and you're giving it to a friend, <laughs> and they're like, "That's fucking two hundred fifty thousand dollars." Well, that's you the, pirate ass bitch. That's that's the, sh- the shit with Xbox, where it's like, right? Where it's like. Oh man, Chris and I were both really excited about the new Hitman game. I guess we'll both pay for it though, right. even though we were totally. Well, that's why you make homebrew shit for our D and D campaign, right? I'm just, you know, how yeah. far do how far do we go? Uh, yeah, I. That's the thing, right? Th- you start getting charged five percent per our game. That's that's the thing, right? Like they 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 don't listen to feedback. They do this bullshit thing, and then we're in a situation where it's like. Well, how far does this go? How scummy will these businessmen be to me, the everyman who just wants to play D&D with my friends? Right. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Our channel has daily uploads from podcasts, video essays, let's plays to skit. Be sure to watch on Twitch. We stream all our video game and podcast content live at 5 ESD every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Our intro is by Brad Kendrick and music by Froggy and the Friendship. Link to all that in the description below. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.